Hey everybody, Kyle Goth here from GoatFromReviews.com and the Goat From Reviews YouTube channel. I've got my uh, quick reaction to the new film Creed 3. This is the ninth film in the Rocky Creed franchise. I don't know what we're really calling it at this point. Um, it's also the uh, directorial debut of Michael B. Jordan and his third appearance as Adonis Creed, uh, son of Apollo Creed, who we've seen uh, kind of grow and become his own very strong character in this world. Uh, Sylvester Stallone did not return to act in the film. He does have a producing credit, but I do believe that's in name only. I'm not sure if there's bad blood um, between Stallone and Jordan. Um, but I don't know that... I, I think in order for Creed to stand on its own, it does need to stand on its own. Um, he does need to have at least a film that is his. And, and you do feel the presence of Rocky. They mention him by name. They're not skirting around or avoiding him. Um, the, you know, there's a couple moments where it's like, I feel like he would have been at the, the boxing matches, but, uh, you know, all things considered, uh, it's a, it's a very strong third outing. It's a very strong ninth overall film. And I think it's a really interesting opening act for Michael B. Jordan as a director. Uh, the fight scenes are really interesting. Uh, it's, it's very noted that he took, uh, in, inspiration from anime and you can see that at play here. It's not overly so, but it does kind of stand itself apart from other films in the franchise from a fight standpoint, and that's really good. You need to have that. There's been a lot of, like, give and take over how much should franchises, as they grow, how much should they evolve and become something different, and how much should they stay the same? Um, because it seems like you get films like, uh, what is you get films like the, the new Scream films from Radio Silence or the Star Wars uh, sequel trilogy or the Halloween uh, kind of return trilogy with Jamie Lee Curtis, where they have these ideas of like, how much do we want to honor the past? How much do we want to evolve and change? Because you get films that people really love, things like Force Awakens um, or even Scream 5, where they do feel kind of a little carbon copy of the original almost to a fault, but it's also kind of invigorating a franchise in a way. And then you have your follow-ups that usually tend to take the Last Jedi approach of, well, let's try and... Let's try and evolve the material and, and make it something palatable for future installments of movies. I'm, I love The Last Jedi uh, for doing that. And I think Creed Three feels like that kind of a film. It feels like it is shedding the weight that the Rocky franchise has and developing its own self uh, and, and moving the characters forward. This film builds on the relationships from Creed Two, but also from Rocky Four a little bit. Um, and also just kind of coming full circle from some of the elements introduced in Creed One. Um, it's a movie that hinges on those first two Creed films. So if you haven't seen them in a while, I would suggest checking them out again um, so that you do get that kind of sense of, of this trilogy and where it is kind of standing currently. I think the performances are all very strong. Michael B. Jordan, um, great as Adonis. Again, I think Tessa Thompson, given less to do in this film, but I think what she's there for is really good. Same thing with Felicia Rashad. Uh, less to do in the film, but I think does a lot with it. The standout here for me was Wood Harris, who was in the first two Creed films. He plays uh, the trainer that uh, and, and co-owner of Creed's uh, gym. I think they uh, they have really great chemistry together and they work really well together. And then, of course, um, why am I blanking on his name? The actor that is in uh, the film as the as the antagonist. Gosh, why am I forgetting his name? Anyway. He's fantastic in the role. I thought he's been a fantastic actor since I was introduced to him in Defy Bloods. Um, his personal situation outside of the film's going. Um, I, I don't know enough about that to comment, but I'll say as far as acting goes, he's very good in this film, and he's got a pretty big year ahead of him with performances. So, um, you know, again, I'm, I'm not going to comment on his on his personal stuff because I just don't have enough information. I don't think I don't think most of us do. Um, but as far as performance-wise goes, he's very good in the film, and he works very well as an antagonist that you understand why he is the way he is. He believes he is the good guy in the story, and that makes a very, very strong villain characters because he believes he's the good guy. He does have reason to be angry to do what he's doing, and that makes the film work really, really well for me. Um, I don't know if it's the, the strongest in the Creed franchise. I still lean pretty heavily on those first two films. It would take a rewatch to know for certain, but it is a very strong film, and, and far from far from the weekend of Rocky, although, to be fair, Rocky is kind of like the Scream franchise for me. They are varying quality throughout the entire franchise, but I don't think there's a bad one in the bunch. So, 
Uh, let me know your thoughts on Creed 3 down below. I'd love to hear them. While you're down there, please like and subscribe. There are two free things you can do that help support the channel, and you never miss new episodes of the show as they drop. Also, check out GoatFromReviews.com for my written reviews. You can find Goat From Reviews on Facebook. You can follow me personally at Almighty Goatman on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. And you can find my show, Kyle and Nick, on film that I co-host with Nick Plotchuk from the St. Paul Filmcast. We have new episodes every single week. The links are down in the description for that, and we'll see you next time.